It's quite a modern building for this small town. Um, but on the other hand, it's a national monument. There's some other structures there. I don't know what they're for. I don't know if they're part of it or not. Look like they might be. A little bit of uh, fantasy uh, above the uh, town. Ironically, it almost looks like the stereotype Cro-Magnon man. And if the little girl that was found is any example of what man looked like, I don't think we looked like this. This uh, very lovely graphic as you go in is a good illustration, visual illustration of the evolution of man from uh, Afarenus and then Lucy uh, that was discovered by Leakey, uh, which was I think Australopithecus, I'm not, I think it was Africanus. And they told me where the footprints were found. Nicotone boy, I don't know. Homo erectus. What a lifespan of Homo erectus. And look at the relative shortness of Homo, uh, Homo neanderthal and sapiens. Homo about 140,000, I think. Homo sapiens about 90,000 ago. Here's a very clever, um, apparently, reconstruction of the footprint path at Laetoli, which would appear to show a man and a woman 35,000 years ago. <clears throat> well, that's the boy. And probably a repro of the skeleton, or at least the components are the dark, I suspect. So this is interesting, Demonisi, or however you pronounce it illustrates that uh, movement that National Geographic's General Graphic illustrates was the person um, who came out of wherever that is. It was in Georgia. This is 1.7 million years. This looks like a stratigraphy of this area here, saint Saint-Julien, Dordogne, uh, 4,600 70,000 years ago to 70,000 years ago. The Moustier, uh, Abri, in the same area, Dordogne, uh, 56,000 to 35,000 years ago. More cohesive, more tight, fewer big rocks, whatever that means. But otherwise, this is to someone like me means nothing. Those shards of flint you see there, right dead center is one, for example, right there. Unless those are indicative of mankind's tool creation and, and a location that would have been, for lack of a better term, a tool shop. You have the look of man-worked stone, I think. This is illustrating a method of uh, dating, but I'm not sure what it is. This is a clever video that illustrates quickly, um, starting right about now. This is what happens as you dig down over time. This is carbon dating here. It's a moose. Whoa. That puppy could do some serious damage. Like I said. Man, that thing is big. Notice this bone's location is right down there where the red is in the back, and that's this bone here. How big that animal is. The weight of those bones alone.
This is fascinating. It's the um, a large piece from which smaller pieces were broken off. I've never seen one that size. This display is interesting because it's showing how um, things other than man working uh, a stone can create what looks like a man-made stone. Like This is from the impact of uh, a rocks falling off of something onto, an, onto another rock. This one shows the impact from heat somehow, like the force fight or something like that maybe. showing this to show how novel this museum is in its use of video. Uh, the video is on the screen ahead of the camera, of course, but the sound's coming from behind me. But it gives the sensation of sitting right in the area watching him do his work. The video is fascinating because it shows how um, anthropological artists will reconstruct um, the man as close as they can from within their skill to be what the bones represent. Reproductions like this are to me just superb because kids and adults can try to put some kind of mental image behind the facts that are injected into the skull over a lifetime or a class period. This is how the bones are often found. It's interesting how the entire rib cage is crushed in. And maybe because it doesn't have much structure all those small bones once you take the mass of it out or put big heavy things on it whereas these heavier bones can somehow take the pressure off them and you never know how the sediments filled in an area like underneath those fingers. It illustrates how men would have been able to use uh, stone tools to make other implements for example out of bone. This apparently illustrates the uh, culture of La Chate Aronian 40,000 to 35,000 years ago. I'm not sure all the principal sites is what the red points are. This being a patch, a reproduction of a patch of ground excavated to the point of finding not only the teeth, bones that I can't identify, although it looks like it might be hand bones or foot bone, and then some um, worked stone. And presumably this is a reproduction of an animal found, but I would not imagine it had skin on it. I would imagine that an orthopod um, or archaeologist could look at these joints and tell whether they were afflicted with arthritis. Many of the women in that period were afflicted with arthritis because they sat bent kneed and ground corn. And just That's not just of this early era, it was of the areas when they had corn to grind <laughs> much, much later. I don't know if they did this then or not. This shows the period of expansion 28,000 to 22,000 years ago. Now notice we're only getting to be about 8,000 years from the point in time when man would have crossed over on the North American continent. It's interesting to look at the finite precision of these small implements. Here it shows the uh, making of, they're going to make implements uh, 
um, decorations art 33 to 36,000 years ago. How laborious this would be, but yet, if you think about it, um, the building of a house was incredibly laborious a hundred years ago, because everything had to be done with hand tools. And now we use power tools, and even the power tools get better and better. Some kind of prehistoric etching, I don't see what it illustrates. It may be indecipherable. This represents the period 18,000 to 12,500 BP. So it's at about the same time that the North American continent is beginning to be populated. See how a person with a skilled, who is skilled, would learn how to use the attributes of each individual stone to achieve what we now presume are the attributes because we manufacture them to precise standards. These are Bronze Age um, instruments. <clears throat> Hard to get a good picture of some of these because the light is reflecting off this glass. to know what the story is behind this collection of uh, bronze axes. Was it a military cache of some sort? I think this is illustrating. Um, hard to get it with the light here. We'll try it again here. I think these pieces are illustrating chunks that are knocked off of the chunks above. So it's the sequential flaking process, if you will. But look at how narrow that pieces there. Certainly that could be something, if nothing else, a dang good deadly axe. Like an illustration of relief um, work. This whole cabinet, this entire wall, is a display of teeth, artifacts, stonework, toolkits from specific eras. I mean, you could be a, a doctor in this stuff and then maybe you'd have a grip on it. What I end up doing is going through some place like this, looking for the things that, are, that seem to be novel. Like this, a display of a toolkit uh, for making a toolkit. The interesting format of this access area, it's a circular staircase spiral staircase from the first to the second to the third floor is the use of the stratigraphy from different eras, presumably those getting closer and closer to today. And it's a very clever way to do it. And the wall is giving the appearance, if not in fact, of being the limestone characteristic of this era. An area. These are stone carvings, relief carvings, I guess they'd be called. Can't quite make them out. It looks like there's an animal to the left, upper left, facing the upper left, and an animal just below him on the left side facing the right, right there. Several animals here. These two, one looks like a cow. One looks also like a cow. Head's a little bit horse-like, but it looks like a cow. Although, hmm, it does look horse-like. Except the back looks like a cow. And there's another, and I'll have to turn it sideways to get at it. But there's another one, and I think that's its head in the upper left-hand corner. I 
And here we can see the bottom of an animal. It's a male because you can see the genital organ there. Next one up a bison. You can see the tail very clearly on the left. Genital hanging down, so it's a male. These are female figures which normally represented um, procreative ability. They're hard to make out here, but this is a good illustration of not only the drawing, but of the damage that can naturally occur um, by on the surface of the rock from oxidation of or de deposition of something out of the air or uh, from water dripping across it and don't know what this is. Here is something that looks like it's mainly feet, but I don't know if that's true. That certainly looks like a foot, even with a sandal of some sort on it. And these look like four examples, or three examples of feet. Another example there. Don't know what that example is supposed to be of. Unless it's a pregnant woman. And there are two more feet, but of different sizes. It's hard to tell um, what qualitative judgment you can make. For example, there's this animal. You can see that the hind, quarter, hind legs are just a uh, oval shape. Uh, the front legs are more distinct. The head is pretty much lost. There's a tail. It's not a fine rendition in the terms of fine quality lines, but did it represent a style difference? Did it represent a difference in the quality or the skill of that particular artist? Here's something that almost looks um, modern art in today's world. And we can barely make it out. Down here in the lower left is where that the muzzle is. We can see the line going underneath the eye, which would be right about in there, right there, dead center. But what was this circle over here supposed to be that looks like an artist's palette? Don't know. In caves there are many different signs, but what do they mean? certainly looks like it would be a sun, but who knows? These are very interesting bone carvings. Look at the forms, the lines in there are pretty. An artist could describe even more what's being shown. The decoration of tools is interesting. Art for its own sake, but maybe it wasn't for its own sake. Maybe it enhanced the uh, religious aura and potency of, of the tool, particularly if it was a hunting tool. An assemblage of small bones, fragments that would have been used for necklaces, teeth from various animals, somewhat the way they're used today. And the decoration, even more of those individual teeth. Obvious example of necklaces, we've bracelets we've seen before, seashells. I'm guessing that this may have been a, a form of a boat made out of bark, a sheet of bark, maybe. I don't really know, I can't tell. Don't speak French. Well, fishing tools, notice the intricacy of these, made from bone. Here also for spearing fish. Imagine what you were doing, what you were using a point that size for. 
maybe the woolly mammoth. These are illustrating the flakes and the position from which they came off of the uh, master or core rock. I forget what this technical term for that is. A typical garb of ancient man hunting reindeer or whatever. Notice the fur on the leg is just tucked in on the inside for warmth. And the reindeer is a relatively small animal. Not the size of an elk at all. About half the size. This is, in, is showing the atl atl that we called it, but much more elaborate than what I had seen with the culture in North America, which normally just used a stick, but without this kind of elaboration of that tool added on the end. Now look at this one. Actually a piece of art to say the least, and apparently an atl atl. That's interesting. I wonder if that's indicative of the time difference, the extra 6,000 years, as well as the nature of the migration into Europe versus into North America. There's even a tail on the animal. Here a version of uh, the Meta much more strong rock than was used in the southwest of course which was sandstone and probably a lot less destructive of teeth interesting to look at these very fine bone tools um, presumably that's a needle much more sophisticated I suspect than gouging a hole through leather with an awl and then running thick chunks of leather through it uh, from the size of the hole in there this was able to handle a relatively fine thread compared to a chunk of rawhide. Look at these little ones here. Very detailed work could be done. Looks like the period of time was 17,000 BP. This skull gives an idea of what one might have to do to, first of all, find all of these little pieces and then reconstruct the skull somehow, like a jigsaw puzzle with pieces missing. Wouldn't it be fascinating if someday we had instruments by which, or methods by which we could tell the person who created this piece of art that he was remembered eons into the future. This is cave painting here. Uh, although it does not uh, indicate, we don't know what we mean, humanity doesn't know what this means. There you can see the V at the top, the large swatches of red there, and then the black going horizontally across the bottom. Was this the unfinished drawing of a horse, or is too much of it been wiped away, or was it not a horse but an animal that had two horns? I don't know. These look like symbols. They don't look like anything recognizable. But in the, on the work itself, they're very identifiable, but don't know what they are, but they're very clearly done. Great intention. Why would one, for example, here have to make the groove so deep? What was the point? Surely there was a point. And still another. Looks like a tooth. Could it have been a tooth? Was it illustrating something like that? The upper right of this is this elk. Looks like an elk. Maybe it's a caribou. But very hard to distinguish it in the rock itself. This illustrates two cats, but notice there's also a lot of scribbling under it or over it and to the sides of it. So it's hard to distinguish that at all. Well, 
fairness, you have to ask, is this um, presumption of two cats um, the imaginings of the archaeologist? Um, kind of like if you scribble a whole bunch of lines on a piece of paper with your eyes closed and then open your eyes and try to find things within that. And this is a form of art in imprinting into mud certain designs. Certainly at the time they must have thought that these were very ephemeral, very temporary, and yet for some reason they lasted. Lovely panorama of the town and its surroundings in this valley. Not sure where this goes, but we'll pursue it since the door is open. It does not say interdit. And I think it is that one of those buildings that I was looking at yesterday sat on the face of the cliff. Now, did they hollow out those faces? And what were the square holes for? God, they sure were defensive. I don't even know how you get up there. A lovely space, place to spend time. It's nice and cool up here now. It's interesting how this, how and what this has been used for. Maybe a water trough here. Looks like water flowed down there. A man might have used it for a sheep or something. That this would gather water maybe. Still does, yes, you can see here. Water comes out of there, you can see the staining and they designed it to come down off that wall and fill these catchments. Clever. And there one has been artistically uh, enhanced to give a false wood surface or log top to that wall. And presumably that little hanging gardens is a pretty thing when there's water flowing through there. Again, notice the catch basin runoff all the way down through here.